Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Justin Falkenstein. I'm the Strategic Marketing Manager for ITI. Uh, today, we're very excited because we're going to be talking about the new CAD fix integration with TechSoft 3D Hoops. Before we begin, I have a couple of quick uh, slides to go over. Today, uh, we will be talking about the TechSoft 3D and a technology overview. Um, and then we will be switching gears and focusing on CAD fix and giving a brief background on that. And then from there, we will be discussing uh, the CAD fix model identification technology where CAD fix PPS and CAD fix Viz both integrate with the Hoops native platform. Uh, and then we'll be following it up at the very end with a brief Q&A for any remaining questions that we are not able to answer during the presentation. Today we have Jonathan Jura from TechSoft 3D joining us, and we have Mark Gammon who, from ITI who will be to focusing on CAD fix. And from here, I will turn things over to Jonathan to get us started. All right, well, thank you, Justin. Um, if you let me share my screen, we'll start talking mm -hmm. about TechSoft a little bit here. Uh, it's real nice to be able to uh, be doing this with ITI, um, just waiting. There we go. Let's do share my screen. And we should be good. Yeah, so um, it's great to be working with ITI and be able to uh, share some of what uh, TechSoft 3D has been doing in the engineering industry. So we are uh, two software companies providing technology uh, for 3D engineering software applications. Um, and really today we're gonna to talk about the partnership between the two of our companies, as well as how our technology can help you build compelling and powerful 3D engineering applications. Um, so first, just a little bit about TechSoft 3D, who we are. Uh, you may or may not be familiar with us, um, but we are one of the leading SDK providers, um, software development toolkits for engineering software. And uh, we, supply a variety of different toolkits to a variety of different industries from shipbuilding to building and construction, 3D printing, uh, CAD viewing, CAM, CMM, uh, really anything that is 3D software that's not in the um, <clears throat> entertainment industry uh, or the gaming industry. And then even, even uh, now we're starting to supply some technology uh, to companies like Unity 3D and, and Epic. Uh, we've been around for, for quite some time now, so, so just a little bit about TechSoft uh, since 1996. And over those years, uh, we've grown the number of different companies that we partner with to provide technology to, and it's over 650 different partners. Uh, we're pretty dispersed worldwide. We have a big development office in Lyon, France, um, and then sales offices and other um, employees really dispersed, especially since covid um, around the world. So now about 120 different uh, engineers and um, support staff around the world, about uh, 70 or more of those are really focused on creating uh, these software development toolkits. And then um, in, in recent years, we've acquired uh, some funding from, from Battery Ventures. And so that's really allowed us to accelerate uh, not just our development, but also bring a few other toolkits in-house to provide this technology uh, to, to other um, software companies, particularly right now in the uh, simulation and analysis space. So we have some SDKs there, as well as uh, advanced graphics. So now photorealistic rendering. Um, but really what it is that we do, um, we don't sell end user products, but we sell these software development toolkits. And our focus is allowing uh, companies like yourself uh, to innovate with, the, with that. And that's what really excites us, is uh, fueling innovation with this technology. And that's what we're here to talk about today, is really unlocking uh, the potential for you when it comes to CAD access, CAD simplification and model simplification with, with CAD fix from ITI, uh, and then also visualization using, using our graphics toolkit. So we're providing that technology and we'd love to see what you're doing with that to solve some of the really tough engineering problems that, that are out there today and create innovative um, software. So that could be building uh, the next generation of, of smart cars or, or green technology, green um, building and construction, uh, or making advances in 3D printing with new materials and, and uh, kind of bringing in 
um, intelligence from CAD data for, for building um, uh, new machinery for 3D printing with these new materials and, and new approaches. So uh, you might not have heard of Techsoft 3D because we're really under the hood, but we are under the hood of some of the largest um, companies out there making 3D engineering software. So I did mention Unreal Engine as well as Unity 3D, uh, but then also companies like Autodesk, Dassault and Siemens, also uh, Bentley, PTC, Adobe are all in different parts of their, their company in different companies and, and different strategic business units are using some of our, our technology. Um, so it's really exciting to be working with these companies and, and um, being able to provide them uh, with, with software uh, development toolkits. Now, uh, we have quite a large portfolio. We're only gonna focus on just a few today, but really from, from beginning to end, we have a variety of, of different toolkits. We either um, build here and, and then provide to uh, you as a, as a development tool, or we resell. And so there are a few here. You notice right in the middle, we have Siemens, MachineWorks, and, and Autodesk. But today we're really gonna focus on the Hoops products, primarily Hoops Visualize for graphics and Hoops Exchange for CAD Access, now bringing that into uh, CAD Fix and, and then being able to simplify, simplify models. So let's talk about those, those two toolkits just a little bit, especially as they're part of um, an integration platform. So, so uh, what's really powerful is not just having a single toolkit, but being able to uh, have that um, and be able to move data from, from one place to another. So not just being able to read a CAD file, but then be able to extract the data from that using Hoops Exchange, bring it into CAD Fix, be able to operate on that, and then being able to bring it into Hoops Visualize and being able to now visualize and interact with, with that, uh, that 3D data. And so Hoops Exchange and Hoops Visualize are part of this Hoops native platform for accelerated development, particularly for desktop development. Also, um, we do have some people shipping uh, using that for other what we call native development. So it could be on mobile, um, iOS and Android, or even AR and VR. But the majority of, of these are, are desktop applications um, and building desktop applications. Uh, we, we have a, a, a web platform as well. We're not gonna talk about that today, but if that is something that interests you, please feel free to, to reach out to us um, about that. So we're gonna look at Hoops Exchange, then we're gonna look at Hoops Visualize as part of this native platform, and then Mark's gonna be talking about how we can use that data within CAD Fix to do CAD simplification. So what is Hoops Exchange? Well, this is a, a CAD access toolkit for bringing in a variety of CAD formats. So we're really format agnostic and it doesn't plug into, let's say a plugin using the API of SolidWorks or a plugin using the API of, of Katia, um, but it's, it's a toolkit that can stand alone within your application that doesn't require any other uh, connectivity to other CAD applications to bring data in. So we are able to read CAD data of over 30 different formats both in mechanical CAD, as well as in building and construction, like, like IFC and Revit and DWG files, uh, really those, those two big domains and then everything in between. So you have your CAD standards like STEP, uh, JT, uh, IFC is a, a building construction standard. So we can read those in um, and provide you with a single point of, of query for your application to now interrogate that data. Not only are we giving access just to, let's say, the triangles for, for graphics, so that would be the tessellation, uh, but for files uh, that contain rich engineering data, for instance, BREP or, or boundary representation, so that the mathematical representation of your surfaces, so the arcs and the lines and the uh, canonical uh, surfaces that were created in the original CAD package, uh, we're able to bring that in as well. Um, in a, a common geometry description without altering it. So we're really, we see ourselves uh, not as a translation toolkit, but an access toolkit. And that's really important because we're not changing the data, we're just now presenting it to you in its original form. So it could be as uh, parametric curves and surfaces or 3D curves and surfaces, even NURBS uh, curves and surfaces if it's present in that file. We present that to you and you can you can do with it as you please. You can analyze it or like, like ITI does, it takes that 
common geometric description and then simplifies it. Um, and that's a really powerful uh, point for the, the CAD fix tools because um, this has manufacturing intelligence associated with it and they can do some really interesting things with, with that boundary representation or that BREP. Uh, one of the other powerful parts about Hoops Exchange, the CAD Access Toolkit, is uh, more of that manufacturing and the business intelligence and rich data that you have in some of these CAD files, like uh, the product manufacturing information or PMI. So we see that here. Now, how is the part manufactured? Um, and what are the tolerances that you need to adhere to in order to first make it and then inspect it and make sure that uh, we were able to hit those quality standards? All of that too is accessible uh, from, from the API, uh, both visually, so we're, we're presenting it here uh, in a visual way, and, and uh, PMI as well as uh, geometric dimensioning and tolerances, it's a, it's a visual language. And so we wanna make sure that when we present this to you and your users, it graphically looks the way, the way it did when it was authored in the original CAD package. So we, pre we um, present the visual PMI uh, but also, we see a lot of emphasis on what's called semantic PMI as well. That is, uh, taking this data instead of presenting it visually, being able to present it in a way to an application so it can be interpreted and queried and then automatically, potentially, uh, be acted on. So for inspection or for machining, we know that this is a hole of this diameter of this tolerance and we can, we can maybe automatically do tool selection or automatically be able to create uh, a, a inspection path, knowing the different CAD features um, and what we expect to have there. Other things come in as well. So uh, the organization of complicated assembly trees, as well as instancing um, materials uh, and metadata. So all of that rich data for, uh, for uh, texturing and um, also the metadata associated with, with the files, all that's presented in this API uh, for you to, to use within your application. So we talked about some of the files. This is really one of the benefits of, of Hoops Exchange is just the breadth and the depth of the CAD that we're able to import. And so we have all of your major standards like STEP and IGIS, uh, IFC for building and construction, some, some newer standards like GLTF, um, graphical standards like STL, um, still being used in 3D printing. Uh, but then all of your major CAD file formats we're able to bring in as well from Dassault, Siemens, uh, PTC, and, and Autodesk, allowing you to bring that data in and be able to, to act on it. So that's Hoops Exchange. We're able to bring in this rich CAD data, but uh, that's only really half the problem. You want to be able to visualize it as well. And so Hoops Visualize is our, our desktop, mobile, and AR, uh, VR graphics engine. Uh, both of these are multi-platform, uh, enabled so you can do development on, on not just Windows but uh, on Linux and, and Mac but really this is an engineering focused graphics engine so it's not for not for gaming it's not for advanced visualization for special effects but it comes with a set of tools that allow you to um, build engineering workflows so it has um, this integration with that assembly tree and it has integration with being able to a walk down the assembly tree and pick out um, parts and surfaces and edges, as well as uh, being able to connect those surfaces with the PMI that, that references it as well. And so there's a number of um, different tools that kind of sit within this graphics engine, really specific to making um, engineering applications. So it could be uh, a notes framework or a red line framework for creating red line views for uh, annotating and being able to do uh, design review of, of, of your designs. Um, but mo most important too is, is the integration that it has with a variety of different toolkits. So it's kind of like this framework that many other things will, will sit on top. Um, also, it's, it's designed to work with, with your data. So it's not designed to work with with video game texture data and environmental effects, it's designed to work with, with engineering data. So uh, that can really be a variety. It can be a high um, triangle count for a, like a, a large mesh uh, with a variety of colors, maybe for simulation and analysis. So being able to apply a, a color lookup to, to that mesh. 
or it could be uh, highly complicated um, assemblies with potentially uh, thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of parts and being able to visualize that uh, as well as drill down to maybe a very specific area of interest. So it's built for these engineering, these engineering workflows. Um, so we talked about Hoops Exchange for CAD access. We talked about Hoops Visualize for being able to, um, to visualize that CAD data. Uh, but really it's this ecosystem that is built around these different toolkits that we're here to talk about today. And so it's not just the two of those toolkits working together, but when you look at all of the different engineering SDKs out there like CADFIX, being able to now leverage that technology is also important as well because you have very specific uh, needs for, for your, your users or demanding of, of your application. And so being able to have a modeling kernel or a simplification uh, SDK or an analysis SDK is, is really important. And so today we're talking about not just data access and graphics, but we're talking about the integration with, with CADFIX and being able to take that, that data, be able, be able to manipulate it in some way, um, and, and that uh, integration is really important. So we've, we've built an in integration between the two of these, these toolkits. In fact, um, this is part of a much larger program here at Techsoft 3D, where we have a variety of different partners, uh, different companies that are making 3D engineering uh, SDKs. And uh, we're bridging data, uh, pushing data into the, these SDKs or allowing us to visualize those SDKs. It's part of this Hoops <clears throat> integration partner program. And so uh, that's what we're talking about today is this, this integration with, with CADFIX. And uh, the real benefit of that is you have all these tools at your disposal to rapidly build an application, bring it to market. And that's really important. Uh, we want to be able to accelerate your development, uh, be able to ship as quickly as possible. Um, it is a competitive landscape out there. And by leveraging these proven technologies, uh, you can really now differentiate yourself uh, with your special sauce on top of those. And so you get to focus on what is, is key to you and where your do domain really is and, and your expert knowledge, knowledge is. Uh, the other benefit is we maintain these toolkits. And as the industry continues to progress, so it could be through uh, new rendering algorithms or it could be through uh, the need for new uh, support for new file formats or these file formats change, we're the ones that bear that burden and allow you to stay really, really up to date. So data, <clears throat> excuse me, data access, data visualization and, and data um, simplification is really what we're focusing on. And um, well, what's the benefit? So if we are talking about data simplification, where are some of these, these uh, opportunities for us to build applications and provide value? Not all, but some. So really it comes to lar large model visualization it is of course important. And, and Mark's gonna talk to you about all of the, uh, the different tools that are available within CADFIX in just a minute here. But um, it seems like our data sets are getting bigger and bigger and bigger every year. Our computing power is increasing, 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 but this, the size, the complexity of, of our models are doing the same. And so trying to keep up with that large model visualization uh, for let's say uh, plant and process, being able to um, say visualize a massive um, uh, chemical processing plant or an offshore oil rig or uh, a multi-domain, um, multi multi-building uh, building structure uh, or, or these massive uh, ships that are being built. So being able to model down to the individual part is gonna be important and being able to have access to that. Um, but having all that data at your fingertips at any particular time still may be outside of our computing power or our visualization power or our underpowered, some of our underpowered um, uh, devices. So being able to have this simplification workflow um, to still represent that data at a, at a um, much larger level is important. Uh, another opportunity for uh, simplification is, is around simulation and analysis. So uh, for a very complicated part or assembly, the more complicated it is, the harder it is to do simulation and, and analysis on it. And so a very common way of uh, taking a first pass is to do a simplification or a defeaturing of that part or assembly first, and then running your simplification 
or excuse me, your simulation and your analysis algorithms on top of that. So, so simplification and defeaturing is, is important for that. And then lastly, where we're seeing a real application of this is in the AR and VR space. And so for these larger models, um, we can probably render them on a, a high-end system, um, which is great. Uh, but when you start to render them, particularly for AR and VR, your frame rate needs to be better. So, you have, so, so normally we can deal with, with uh, ex an acceptable frame rate for engineering applications could be around 30 or uh, 50 frames a second on just a single monitor. Uh, but when you now have a headset on, you need 90 or 100 frames a second um, in order for it to be a positive experience. Uh, not only that, but you need to render uh, each scene twice, one for, for each eye. And so we're seeing a need to render potentially four times or more faster or have four times more compute power for AR and VR workflows. So again, model simplification um, is being utilized particularly in, in this area as well. So before I hand it over to Mark, if you are interested uh, in learning more about these technologies, please reach out to us at techsoft3d.com. And uh, that QR code there, uh, also put this in the chat in just a minute, it brings you to our, our website um, where you can sign up for a 60-day evaluation of, of our toolkits and be able to um, be able to use Hoops Exchange, Hoops Visualize, and now, soon to come, uh, AdFix as well. So, so you'll have to get that from ITI, but um, I now want to hand it over to, to Mark to talk about um, the ITI CAD fix and how it works with these, these toolkits, bringing data in and simplifying it. Okay, thanks, Jonathan. Let me get the screen sharing to work. <clears throat> okay, so hopefully you can see my first slide. Good, <laughs> thanks for nodding. Right, um, yes, yeah, so uh, Jonathan's introduced uh, TechSoft 3D. I'll uh, take over from here and introduce uh, CAD fix, the product we're gonna be talking about. Um, but first, a bit of company background uh, to where Catfix has come from, uh, what it consists of. Um, so Catfix is from a uh, US-based company, ITI, uh, based in Cincinnati, Ohio, um, with teams around the world. So in, in, in the UK, the main Catfix element team is based just outside Cambridge. Uh, there's element teams in Israel. And uh, ITI is now also part of the big uh, Wipro family, big Indian IT company. Um, so we now have access to development resources in India as well. So Again, globally spread development team. Um, we've been in the business of dealing with CAD geometry and meshing for, for quite a long time. 45 years is our anniversary this, this, this summer. Um, initially starting with mesh generation for simulation, then CAD exchange, uh, so I just file exchange in the early days, uh, moving up to native exchange. And then in, in the last sort of 10, 15 years, focusing really on, on modifying CAD geometry because it's, it's inappropriate for some of the downstream applications that are uh, coming around these days. So more and more realism goes into the CAD geometry, which makes the life of the downstream simulation or visualization engineer harder and harder. So a lot of our work has been uh, focused on 3D simplification, advanced simplification of, of complex geometry. So the, the goal being, as I said, is to connect the, the CAD geometry with some downstream application where the two don't naturally fit together. Um, eliminating manual work and automation are two of the drivers for CAD fix. So uh, particularly automation, and that plays a big part in the integration with, uh, with Hoops and the TechSoft team, as there's, there's no CAD fix user interface involved in this integration with Hoops. It's all uh, black box technology provided by CAD fix. So automation, is, is the key technology there to, to allow us to uh, present our technology in a way that can be plugged into other people's toolkits. So within CADFIX, uh, we have several products uh, within the family. Um, the, the granddaddy of the products is CADFIX DX, the data exchange tool. So this is uh, really sort of the generic uh, advanced CAD cleanup tool um, that we've been building for, for many years. And it's very extensive, has a lot of extensive uh, defeaturing and cleanup functionality. Um, and CAFIX PPS is a more recent addition to the family, five or six years. And it's been focused on the simplification of CAD geometry for uh, large scale design, so plan and process uh, typically. 
Uh, Catholic Phys is the newest edition, um, very similar to PPS, so taking complicated CAD geometry, uh, but the goal is to generate the visualization meshes, whereas PPS is generating geometry. Viz is generating simulation meshes, that's the difference there. Uh, CAPEX STL is a, is a free uh, CAD to STL um, product that we put out there. And then CAPEX Mesh is an advanced CA meshing packages coming out later this year. And also we're dabbling in, in AM, so slicing and, and simulation analysis for AM. So a broad uh, spectrum of products, uh, but an underlying theme is advanced geometry processing. So the two in, in the yellow are the ones we're going to talk about today. They're the two that we've integrated uh, with the Hoops framework. Okay, so the, the general topic for the rest of uh, the talk is, is about the whole model simplification technology that we've got in, in CADFIX. So as I've said, the uh, models are becoming more and more complex, more and more realism is being built into the, the original uh, CAD geometries. And then particularly when you assemble things, so plant and process is a, is a, is a big sort of integration uh, operation, then the model side can very quickly grow and grow. And what I'm going to talk about today is the technology we have in CAPFIX for automatically reducing that level of detail uh, under user control uh, down to some level that is acceptable for your downstream simulation or visualization or other design process. Okay. So just to reiterate Jonathan's slide on the workflows where simplification is, is, a, is a key technology. So as I mentioned, plant and design um, is a big one. There's a lot of, um, a lot of integration and uh, pulling together of CAD models from original equipment manufacturers where you get a fully featured pump engine and you have to instantiate you know, 10 of these things in a ship or an oil rig or some other thing. And you've got the full blown detail of the CAD model up to manufacturing details, uh, which is really irrelevant for the actual plant design. You just need a, uh, a lightweight representation of the sort of bulk properties of that thing. So simplification is, is a big demand from that area. AR and VR has a similar need for the frame rate uh, problem that Jonathan has touched on. Um, again, realism is driving things to become more and more complicated. And that the hardware needs every hand needs to be given simplified geometry uh, in an intelligent way so that uh, you only render the facets you, you can afford to render. And simulation again is, is suffering from the fact of uh, CAD geometry is getting more and more realistic. So meshing uh, for simulation is taking longer because you have to typically take out a lot of the realism um, in order to get a simplified model. So model simplification is, is a big uh, technology and it's one that we've been focusing on for quite a long time. One particular use case I just wanted to uh, flag up is uh, Aviva's E3D product uh, uses CADFIX for its simplification. Uh, so importing uh, mechanical CAD models into E3D, uh, there's an option where you can run the CADFIX uh, geometry simplification as part of the import process and you end up with a much more lightweight geometry inside E3D, which is more suitable for the integration. If you want to find out more about this, then just Google uh, Aviva E3D and CADFIX, and you'll come across the, the press releases and the documentation that you see on the, on the slide here. Right, okay, so a bit more detail on the underlying technology then. So model simplification. Um, within CADFIX, that can be sort of split into two types of simplification. Uh, and the one that we've done most work on and, and where we get the biggest wins are actually simplifying the geometry. So simplifying the, the, the CAD geometry, the, the, the B-rep geometry, uh, the, the splines, the surfaces and so on, the, the actual precise geometry. If you can simplify that, then generating meshes from it becomes a lot simpler and they're a lot less detailed. Um, so I'll go through some of the technologies that are make CADFIX uh, unique when it comes to simplifying actual geometry. But mesh-based simplification is also a uh, technology we have. So if you create a mesh or you start from a mesh, then there are some technologies that we can apply to that mesh to also uh, reduce its complexity. So destination, shrink wrapping, removing internal details and so on. All right, so first of all, we're gonna talk about the geometry-based simplification, quickly whiz through some examples and, and then show you a, a video of a demonstration of the hoops integration um, running on a simplification of a, of a complex model. 
All right, so some of the key technologies that uh, enable CADFIX to do this simplification. Uh, one of the most important ones is something that we call smart deconstruction. So one of the problems that we face with a lot of CAD models these days is they, they have been created by maybe some sort of uh, shrink wrap process within the CAD system. So some of these models you see on the screen may have been modeled as many individual parts, uh, but then as some sort of external uh, final uh, export process, uh, they were uh, shrink wrapped or some sort of IP protection was applied to them, or they were sort of just unioned together to give one single outer solid, um, which makes it quite difficult then to simplify them because they've, they've lost their sort of primitive components and now a very complicated skin of geometry. So the smart deconstruction in CAFIX is able to detect where the sort of boundaries appear between the various regions of your solid and then decompose them back into simplified regions. And you can see some examples here where a single solid can be broken down into 154 smaller solids. And that single, the big tank in the model there again, that breaks down into multiple solids. And the, the real reason for doing this is once you break them down into simpler solids, then you can apply simplification to those solids and approximate them with a uh, simpler primitives such as boxes and cylinders and cones and so on. So this is the this is a key technology for allowing us to do further simplification. So here's an example of that simplification of, of complex geometry into simple primitive types. So this model on the left here is uh, multiple solids um, and we can detect where the regions are and basically where the construction process uh, had a cylinder connected to another cylinder or maybe some revolved solid or extruded solid we can detect those properties and break up the solid into those constituent parts again and then we can look at them and say well is, is there a primitive that would fit to this particular region within a certain percentage that the user can control so how accurately do you want your approximation and then you can take a model as complicated as this and decompose it and then apply the simplification to those pieces to get a much simpler definition that still holds the bulk properties, the visualization uh, nature of this geometry is still uh, pretty much reserved. So that's the second technology, converting to primitives after deconstruction. That saves a, a lot of detail. Um, other sources of complexity and, and increased um, facet count are holes. So particularly, uh, in visualization, a lot of holes you can't see um, by definition. They're, they're, they're filled with something usually, holes or bolts in them, or they're, they're the internal bore of a pipe. Um, so being able to detect these inner surfaces or holes in solids and removing them can have a very uh, dramatic effect on the size of the model and the complexity of the model. So CAFIX has some pretty sophisticated hole detection uh, technology. So on the left, we can pick out simple holes, uh, central holes, through holes, blind holes, uh, inner bores of tubes, and we can remove those. Um, but then on the right hand side, you can see at the other extreme where you might not call that a hole, it's pretty more of, uh, accurate to call it a cavity, that red region trapped in that solid, but most of it can't be seen from the outside, so it doesn't really contribute much to it. Um, so CADIT can also detect and close off these very complex cavities, again, uh, removing the, the detail and reducing the model size. And another one, protrusions, lettering, logos, these are all, again, realism that have been put into the CAD model, becoming more and more common these days, um, that we can detect using the, the CADFIX technology. So we can detect the protrusions, we can take lettering, uh, logos, and we can remove those, uh, which can have quite a big saving on face count and model size. Another big one for the plant industry, again, where, where you're only interested in, or, or the visualization, where you're only interested in the external uh, visible parts of, of a complex object. So on the left here, we've got a, a, a component or an assembly from a plant where the, most of the bulk of the model is held inside that shed. So if you're only wanting an outside visualization, then being able to detect what's inside and deleting it can give you, you know, a 90 plus percentage reduction in the size of this model. And on the right hand side, there's an example of a more sort of an MCAD type geometry, where again, most of the detail, most of the weight of the model is actually inside in those big gears. So if you can reliably detect those and remove them, you can remove, reduce the size of all quite dramatically. 
So that's a quick tour through some of the geometry simplification. There's other ones that I haven't touched on. Um, but let's move on to the mesh-based uh, simplification. So this is something else that CADFIX can provide uh, on top of simplifying the, the, the BREP geometry. So decimation, shrink wrapping, and again, internal detail removal are the three ones I'm going to touch on here, but there are others. So decimation, uh, so you take a triangular mesh and you take some, uh, some input from the user, like how much are you allowed to simplify, how much are you allowed to move the triangles, how much damage effectively can you do to the triangulation uh, such that it starts to not look like the original object. So we've got a damage control, damage limit. So the Catfix Tessellator, uh, sorry, Decimator has uh, that damage limit, a 3D damage limit, it has a target facet count. So if you must have a mesh of a certain size, then you can specify that and Cadix will remove triangles down to that target. Or you can specify a percentage reduction if that's more applicable to the way you want to process your meshes. And the algorithm is, is based on a minimum damage priority queue. So when deciding which triangles to crush out or remove, uh, it, it knows which ones do the least damage. And so it removes those first, uh, which gives you a much better result uh, with uh, that minimizes the, the 3D damage. So that's decimation, which is there. Uh, shrink wrapping, so taking a, a mesh and basically creating another mesh by wrapping some facets around that. So we have three, uh, three approaches to this, a very simple box algorithm, which you, you just put a box around all the components in your mesh. That gives you a very quick, uh, simplified, very grossly simplified mesh. Uh, the convex hull is sort of the next level up. So you're still trying to preserve some of the bulk shape of your objects, as you can see in the bottom right picture there. You can still see uh, roughly, but they're not boxes. So you're still getting, getting something of the original shape coming through. And then finally, there's uh, the shrink wrapper in Catfix, which is uh, controlled by you know, some sort of vacuum setting where you, the higher the vacuum, the more it sucks down and represents the original geometry, um, but you get more facets. Um, but if you relax that, you can get a much cruder representation. So shrink wrapping is a, a mesh simplification technology that Catfix provides. And finally, the, the internal detail removal that I was showing on the geometry side can also be applied to uh, meshes. So we can detect when you have uh, meshes that lie within other meshes and therefore are not visible. And again, we can detect those. Uh, we can also detect partial um, components. So they may be from a complete solid where some of the solid is inside the cavity and some it's outside. And then we can detect the, only the internal bits and allow you to remove those while still preserving the exterior appearance. Okay, so that's the underlying technology and model simplification in CADFIX. So I'm going to go on and talk about one of the products that we've integrated with Hoops. So this is CADFIX PPS, stands for Process Plant Simplification. And this is a BREP simplification tool. So CAD BREP is imported, it's simplified, and then CAD BREP is exported. So there's no meshing, uh, no visualization. This is geometry based simplification. Um, it has uh, a lot of options for the automatic uh, processing. So you can see the dialogue on the right here is taken from CADFIX, but it shows the controls that you have uh, as part of the Hoops integration as well. So you, you have access to these controls for um, how the simplification is carried out, how aggressive it is, and so on. And we, we have an integration within the Hoops framework. So CADFIX can read and write both uh, geometry and mesh uh, from the Hoops uh, exchange format, so PRC format, I think is its name. So that gives it a really nice bi-directional connection to all the Hoops uh, family of products. Okay, so the actual integration we've done uh, is to provide, uh, it's based on one of the, one of the TechSoft uh, sandbox applications. So we didn't write this uh, framework, and, but we have plugged in the CADFIX PPS tool and the CADFIX Viz tool, which I'll talk about in a second. Uh, but first, we'll have a look at the CAPEX uh, PPS tool. So this has been integrated into this sandbox demo uh, using a, a C++ integration of the CADFIX component inside the, the framework of the, of the Hoop sandbox. Um, you saw all the options I showed you earlier for how you can control the simplification. Uh, within the sandbox, as a demo, we've only exposed one of those options. And that's the, basically the very top level 
uh, simplification control, where you can choose between basic coarse, medium, and fine simplification. And so you can get a feel for what CAPEX PPS does. But you know, if, it, if there's any interest, then you do have access to all those configuration options I just showed you. Uh, just to reiterate again, so this is uh, BREPS, this is CAD geometry, this is nerves, curves, surfaces, solids coming in, being simplified, and then coming back into hoops as geometry. So BREP again. All right, so I've got a, a, a demo video here, which I'll just switch to and kick this off. So here's what you see on the screen now is the, the hoop sandbox application. So most of this we didn't write. We added the CADFIX batch uh, tab up here, which you'll see in a second, which is where the CADFIX integration lives. But uh, when I start this off, you'll see we're going to start off by importing uh, a step file up here. So the importing of the step file is provided by Hoops Exchange. So we're reading, a, I think it was a 48 meg step file of this uh, engine room um, assembly here. So again, Hoops Exchange reads it. Hoops visualizes now drawing the, or generating the tessellation and displaying it for us. And just zooming in on some of the, the levels of detail in this model. So nuts and bolts, very common uh, high cost item. Uh, motors with uh, very detailed exteriors. Um, floor grills are very expensive when it comes to prickly pl plant integration. They, they can take a lot of space, a lot of memory. Um, so being able to get rid of those is, is a big win. Again, nuts and bolts, the very detailed fillets and rounds on those nuts and, and the heads of the bolts there cost a lot. Um, but very, very meaning. Uh, company logos uh, on, on equipment such as this pump uh, and the cooling fins uh, are always uh, modeled in excruciating detail. Um, and they all add up to you know, a very heavyweight model. And then there's this cooling um, chamber, cooling uh, box here made up of lots of components. It's basically a box, but it's made up of many components with a lot of detail on the interior. All right, so that's the model. Here's the CADFIX integration. Let me just try and pause the video here. Yeah, so the CADFIX batch tab contains access to some of the CADFIX products that we've integrated. So PPS and Viz are the ones we're going to talk about today. Um, so we switched to the CADFIX batch. We started at the PPS integration, and it's asking us for the simplification level that we want to apply to this model. So this is the only option we've exposed in the sandbox, but there are many others, as you can you can see on the right hand side here, which can be controlled. So we chose level two, which is the, the, the basic um, you know, medium level of uh, simplification. CADFIX is now uh, processing this geometry in the background and it generates a, a new BREP model, which has been read back into the, to the hoop sandbox. And we can, we can see that model now on the screen. So if we just zoom in on some of the areas of the high detail we were looking at earlier, and you can see the before and after, uh, simplification here. So you can see that the, the very complicated motor um, was approximated to the box. So within a percentage fit that was acceptable, uh, that box is a good representation of that motor. You can see some of the nuts and bolts have been deleted, the little handle have been turned into a box, and a lot of the other curved, high, highly curved, highly detailed have been simplified into primitive. So the cone cylinder simplification I was talking about has kicked in here. Uh, the floor paneling is another big, uh, big cost that we can deal with. So CADFIX is able to spot that all these floor panels can be replaced by a simple box. So you get a, a massive saving in model complexity there. Company logos, cooling fins, uh, holes through flanges, the, the turn handle at the top there, all automatically simplified. And the cooling system here as well is a, is a box. So we can spot that as a box and reduce that to a very simple component. And the final result, on this particular model was a 70% reduction in the, the number of CAD faces here. So it was like a 48 meg step file to start with. When exported again, it was down to a nine meg step file. So quite a, a, quite a dramatic reduction and it varies from model to model. The more interior detail you have, the bigger the saving can be. So just a final sort of zooming on the finished uh, article here, showing you the, the level of simplification that was achieved. Okay, so that's that's the CADFIX PPS um, demo that's built into the to the Hoop Sandbox, and yeah, you can you can try this if you download the uh, the Sandbox and choose your own CAD model and run this. Okay, so a little bit of technical detail on how you would run this. So some code uh, 
Um, so how would you actually build this into an application that is using hoops? So I've, I've boiled it down to the basic uh, sequence of functions that you would call. And the ones in black are the catfix functions. So um, after initializing catfix, uh, the first thing we do is use hoops exchange to read in whatever CAD model the person has selected. Uh, that becomes a, an in-memory uh, hoops model. And then we have the, the bi-directional connections I mentioned. So this HGDX hoops to GDX is our function that will then convert a hoops model to a CATFIX model. And then the rest of them are, are initializing and configuring the CATFIX PPS run. So we're setting up some options here. We're telling it which file to import, which file to export. And, and then the PPS function here is where you're choosing what level of simplification and any additional options you want to configure. So you have access to all those other ones. So box simplification here, for example, has been switched on, but you can also supply more options to control them. And then finally, the CAFIX finish function will actually launch the process. Uh, once that's finished, then um, you would then read the final result back into hoops via our um, hoops to or CAFIX to hoops function. So this is the bidirectional connection again. And that's how we end up with the, the, the new BREP geometry back into the hoops framework. Okay, so that's CAFIX PPS, which you know, remember is the, is the BREP to BREP simplification. It doesn't do mesh, it's just be ready to be ready. So the next product I wanted to talk about was the Viz product. Uh, so this is aimed at generating visualization meshes at the end. And uh, this is very similar to PPS. It has a uh, configuration uh, settings for how much simplification should be applied and what level, what detail should the mesh be generated to. Um, it, can, it can start from B rep or it can start from mesh. So if you have existing uh, mesh, so maybe some FBX files or GLTF files that are too big, you can import those and apply some of the simplification to get a smaller mesh. Um, but where, where CADVIX VID really uh, excels is if you start with a CAD BREP, then we can apply all the simplification you just saw from CADVIX PPS to generate a simpler BREP, and then we can generate the mesh from that. And then finally, we can apply some of those mesh simplifications to it as well as so a decimation and shrink wrapping and so on. So we can combine both of the technologies together to get the maximum uh, optimization for the mesh generation. Again, a, a quick video of uh, the sandbox in action on this uh, crane model. Um, so the, the, the technical details are the same, really. It's, um, it's integrated into the Hoops framework. We've only exposed one control at the moment, which is um, how many levels of detail do you want to generate from your model? Um, so you can generate three by default. You can generate more, but we've only exposed three for now. Um, so you can tick on which, which level of detail or which LOD you want to have generated. And then CADFIX will then generate three meshes in this case. And those meshes are then brought back into the Hoops uh, framework for, for visualization. So if we have a look at this uh, video of it in action, so again, it's very similar. Um, so we're starting in the CAFIX batch tab. We're going to use the Viz product this time. So okay, first of all, we're going to import a model. So we're going to import that uh, crane model, which is a 34 meg uh, step file. Hoops Exchange is doing the reading and it's generating an initial tessellation for us. And then once this has been imported, we can uh, have a quick look at some of the, the detail again, some of the realism that uh, these models carry these days. So everything's got fillets and rounds and blends, uh, a lot of detail, a lot of realism uh, has been built into this. A lot of connectors are there in a lot of detail. Uh, so quite a heavyweight thing. If, if, you, if you're gonna install this uh, with lots of other details into a plant, for example, then this one object can, can account for quite a lot. So CAPEX Viz, uh, as I said, you can choose how many levels of detail you want. So here we're gonna just go for, for three. Uh, there's a ref reminder of the other options you can have. If you're gonna do this programmatically um, through a proper integration, then you do have access to all these configurations. So you can see for, for the three LODs, you can change uh, the basic uh, tessellation parameters. So how much the sag and turn do the, do the triangles have? Uh, but then you can also do the PPS type suppression. So suppressing holes, protrusions, um, small bodies. Um, and then the decimation is the meshing, is this mesh simplification stages as well, the shrink wrapping at the bottom there. 
Okay, so if we let this run, we'll have uh, three meshes created. So at the moment we're looking at a B rep geometry brought in. Catflix is now going to generate three meshes for us now. So not geometry, but meshes. So when it's run, you then load them in one after the other. And the sandbox positions them next to the original CAD, so you can sort of do a comparison. So here we are, three LODs. Uh, the smallest one has 9,000 facets, 38,354 facets for the, for the high resolution uh, mesh. So if we look in a bit closer, so the original, oops, mesh on the left, these three are the three created by Catfix Viz. And there again is, is the facet count from each of the LODs. So 10, 40, 355. And if you zoom in on the details uh, showing how the LOD 2, for example, the very extreme LOD, has been quite aggressive in removing costly details while still keeping sort of the bulk exterior properties. Again, a lot of detail in here in this uh, uh, tubing around the, the object. Uh, but LOD 2 at 9,000 facets has retained still uh, quite a lot of detail there from, I mean, you might remember the LOD 2, the, the, the crudest one is for visualization far away. So you wouldn't ever really see how crude the triangulation was. Okay, so I think that's the, the Viz demonstration, a bit shorter, because it, like I say, it builds on PPS. So it has all the simplification that PPS has, but it does do mesh generation of multiple LODs, and it does the, the mesh simplification which PPS doesn't have. So again, a, a quick bit of code to see how this uh, would be implemented in an integration. So very similar, um, hoops exchange reads the model into a hoops model. Uh, our hoops to GDX function turns it into a CADFIX model. Then the same CDFX start, import, export, sets up the, the, the job. And then the CDFX viz is where you can control the options. So in this example, I've exposed a, a lot more controls here. So you can control whether the protrusions are removed, whether the holes are removed, and so on. So you, know, you do have full control over it at a coding level. Just within the, the sandbox, you don't. And again, finally, uh, once you do the CDFX finish, that launches the job, generates the three meshes. And then finally, the, the HGDX, uh, GDX hoops will read back in um, however many meshes you've created. So three in the demo I just did. Okay, so that's the Capix Viz uh, integration. And I think we're almost at the end now. So just to sort of wrap up what we've covered so far today, really. So the main technology we're presenting from Catflix is, is our model simplification technology. Um, and it's, as you've seen, it's geometry based primarily. So it's quite powerful in that it can defeature uh, models by looking at the geometry. So it's not just looking at the mesh, looking at the triangles, trying to work out which ones to decimate, which ones to keep. It goes a whole step further than that. It can actually decide uh, where the holes are, where the cavities are, where the protrusions, the lettering, the internal details. We have all that access from the geometry. Um, and then that allows us to then make more intelligent decisions as to what to keep, what to simplify, how close to the original is the simplified replacement. We have support for Windows, Linux, and Cloud. And if anyone's interested in getting access to the sandbox demonstration that I've just shown you, then that's free available from ourselves at ITI. Um, if you're interested in the Hoops technology you've seen, then as Jonathan um, has already said, then then there's a, a contact details for Jonathan. Okay, Justin, I think that wraps up the, the Catholic side of this. Uh, so uh, anything I can deal with on that front? Yeah, we do have a couple of uh, questions here. Um, one you may have uh, answered in the presentation, but we'll We'll ask it just to just to cover all the bases. Uh, can CAD fix be driven via API or command line? Is it realistic to try to fit this as a step in an automated publishing or collaboration process? Or does this require human interaction to get it right? No, it's, it's definitely automation. That's, that's, that's our main driver. Um, and you, you, you can see from the, the Aviva integration that I mentioned at the end, that is completely hands-off. There's no uh, Catholic user interface, no human intervention there at all. Um, so it, it's definitely designed to be run as one step in an automatic um, process, a publication process, for example. Um, so we do, we have customers using Catholic to go from JT, for example, no, from um, Creo to JT for a documentation publication system that they have. Uh, where they're generating user manuals for um, printers. So Catholic sits in the middle there and it can generate automatically 
um, through some sort of batch uh, server setup where you automatically submit CAD models and then the process will automatically generate um, simplified geometry uh, coming out the other end. So it's definitely aimed at the automation rather than human intervention. Yeah, sounds good. Um, another question, can engineers perform measurements, annotations, or markups directly on CAD models using hoops in the context of CAD fix, PPS, or VIZ? No, I think that's that's an easy one because the, the integration is a, is a black box, as you've seen. So the geometry comes out of hoops, exchange, goes into CAD fix, uh, is automatically processed, and then brought back into hoops. So there's nothing in the CAD fix side of that to do markup and automation. I think the hoop side probably does provide um, some capabilities for doing that and maybe Jonathan might want to take that part of the answer. Yeah, it does. So so when it does get passed back to hoops for visualization, on top of that simplified model, you then could add annotation like red line. <clears throat> and because it is B rep, this is quite interesting. So within the hoops framework, we actually can pick out lines and arcs and pull out measurements from those. And because this is a real powerful point, when you're using um, the the BREP simplification of CAD fix, the BREP is being pushed back into hoops as well. And so you should be able to leverage those tools as well. So that's your annotation, redlining, and, and dimensioning on top of the simplified model. And then last thing, when you don't have the BREP, which which does happen, right? So if you're using a faceted model, we also have measurement tools that fit on top of that as well. All right, excellent. Let me see here. It looks like that might be our final question. So once again, I would like to thank everyone for uh, joining us today for our presentation. And I'd like to thank you, Jonathan and Mark, for uh, presenting and giving us all that uh, awesome information. Um, again, if there are any other further follow-up questions, you can feel free to reach out to either Mark or Jonathan. You can see uh, their email addresses posted uh, on the screen below. Um, or you can definitely visit us at itiglobal.com or techsoft3d.com. Thank you and uh, enjoy the rest of your week.